Information, the prized commodity of humanity. More valuable than time or money. Even more so during these trying times. But even if the world turns upside down, we will still uphold our duty to deliver reliable journalism and serve our community. Life can strip us of our studio. Life can strip us of our live streams. Life can even strip us of our cameras. But we will always find a way to inform and entertain because we are APN. Hello, everyone. I'm Dr. David Van Osdal, and I have the good privilege to serve as your superintendent for Arcadia Unified School District. In Arcadia, we recognize the importance of physical and mental wellness and commit to making it an integral part of your education experience. That is why this event today, our Alive and Aware Wellness Discovery Summit, is evidence of this historical moment where we get very intentional about our journey into wellness. And I am thrilled that you're a part of something very special. I believe as a society and a school district, we are very aware of physical challenges and we strive to build on that, especially during this time of a pandemic. The part I believe we can all agree has been slow to evolve is our awareness and acceptance of social and emotional wellness. Just like we would notice and react to help someone that is wearing a cast on their leg if they were struggling to move around campus, we have to ask ourselves, do we have the same systems in place and collective awareness to support someone facing an emotional challenge? When I was a student in elementary, middle, and high school, my family moved often, requiring me to change schools. Although there were some challenges with leaving friends and making new ones, a positive for me was getting to experience many different school systems. It became clear that some systems were created for students to learn and fit into, while other systems were created to know me as an individual, validate my interests, strengths, challenges, but always with the intent to accept me where I was and move me forward. Like many of you, I have experienced some very dark days where I felt alone, sad, and unsure of the future. It's in those times that the shoulder of an empathetic friend, a strategy I learned from a counselor, or that adult that listens without judgment that makes all the difference. At Arcadia, we aspire to be the latter, where every student that walks through the door feels valued, challenged to be their very best, and provided the tools to ensure they have the self-agency to maintain a healthy balance in their life. This is not new work in Arcadia, and I believe so much of this work comes to life on a daily basis in our classrooms, on our campuses, and even in the virtual environment. Today is a celebration of formalizing this value we share with you, our students, as we continue to grow and provide you a world-class education experience. There are simply too many people to thank for the passion and coordination behind this event today. So on behalf of the school board members and staff, I say thank you to the entire team of extraordinary professionals that said, this is important work today and worthy of our time. Enjoy the day and be well. Hey guys, welcome to the Max and Holly show. He's Max. And she's Holly. And today we're talking about stress and anxiety. To be honest, we tried to film this segment yesterday and uh, it didn't quite go to plan. Yeah. Hey guys, welcome back to the Max and Holly show. That's Holly. He's Max. And today we're talking about stress. Isn't that right, Holly? What, uh, what's wrong with you? Well, you know what's wrong with me. You told me to stay up all night playing video games. Uh, pretty sure you were the one who thought that was a great idea. Yeah, I did. 
No, I'm here and I'm tired. You can do this one without me. Uh, no, we have a lot planned for today's episode, mm -hmm. starting with a math quiz. What? Here you go. First one to finish the no. test wins this delicious donut. Oh, mm -hmm. donut. I haven't had breakfast yet. I'll start. Uh, ready, set, go. Uh, um, this, wait, Max, this is actual math, and I carry the... Uh, uh, uh. Holy, this is second grade math. It's really but easy. But I'm so tired. I can't do it. And okay. done. Wait, wait. No, no, my prize. Please, uh, can I just... Uh, just a little bit. No. Just have a bite. Oh, 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 oh. Please, I'm starving. Oh, do you want a last bite? Yeah, can I just... Last oh, one, oh. No. Uh, All right, time for challenge number two. The winner of this challenge wins two free movie tickets. I like the movies. Uh, I know you do. And this challenge should be easy for you, Holly. All you have to do is answer some simple questions. Okay. How was your day yesterday? Fine. What did you do? Stuff. Oh, what kind of stuff? I don't know. Stuff, I guess. Could you elaborate on what you mean by... No, okay. Can you just leave me alone? Because if you ask me another question, I'm going to... Freak out! Sound a little stressed. Do you want to, like, talk about that? No! No more questions! <sighs> okay. Well, safe to say you failed the challenge. What? Why? You couldn't even hold a simple conversation with me and you just yelled at me. Because you're being annoying. I was asking how your day was. I was asking how your day was. Okay. Yeah, that's very mature. You know what? Maybe we should just shoot this episode Maybe tomorrow. Maybe we should just shoot this episode tomorrow. Yeah, okay. See you then. Yeah, see you. You know what? Just maybe don't come back. I'll just do it myself. Oh, maybe I won't. Yeah, yeah. So, are you feeling better today? Oh, you have no idea. I hope I didn't say anything too mean yesterday. Well... I'm sorry. Don't worry about it. It was actually perfect. What do you mean? Well, it was my own personal experiment on stress and anxiety. What? I wanted to see how much sleep, or in this case, lack of sleep, affects someone's mood. Okay, that is so mean. Am I like your personal guinea pig or something? But it works, right? Okay, that's not even scientific because I never stay up all night. Okay, imagine if you stayed up playing video games and ate junk food for like a bunch of nights in a row. Don't you think that would catch up with you and affect your mood? Well, like, yeah, probably. Of course it would. It's scientifically proven that some of the leading causes of stress in people's lives are poor sleeping and poor eating habits. So let me get this straight. Are you telling me that if I get eight hours of sleep and have a good breakfast, all my problems are going to disappear? No, of course not. You're still going to have to deal with stressful situations and tough times, but don't you think it'd be easier to face those challenges if you weren't bogged down by how tired and hungry you were? Okay, but that's really hard because I can stay up as long as I want. <laughs> Listen, I get you, but... You have the power to get enough sleep and eat your vegetables. <laughs> but seriously, the next time you're feeling stressed or not yourself, think about how much sleep you're getting. You would be surprised at the connection. Thanks, Dad. No worries. That's all the time we have this week. See you guys next time. Bye. At the end of today, we'll be asking you to complete an attendance feedback form regarding today's Wellness Discovery Summit. From these completed forms, we'll be raffling off several amazing prizes. Self-care is important to maintaining a healthy relationship with yourself. Hello students of Dana, First Avenue, Foothills, and Rancho Middle School. My name is Hannah Lee Sandoval. I'm a clinical social worker and a therapist and a former school counselor. Um, I'm really happy to talk with you today about self-care and wellness. Um, and just, you know, describe what it is, why it's important, and some ways to start practicing it today if you aren't already. So what is self-care? It's simply looking after yourself and doing good things for your mind, your body, and soul. And, you know, just like you would take care of somebody that you really love and care about, taking care of your own self. And I think self-care also includes being kind to yourself, loving yourself, and staying present or mindful in the moment. Um, it leads to health, wellness, and greater happiness. So why is it important? It's really important because it helps you keep things in balance and helps you to manage and reduce stress. Especially during this time of the pandemic, I think self-care is so important to help us cope with all the things happening around us that are out of control. It is something that we can control.
So some of the benefits of self-care is that you're less likely to get sick, so you'll stay healthier. You'll be able to manage your stress better. Um, stress actually negatively affects our immune system. So when we're practicing self-care, it reduces stress and therefore helps keep us healthier. A stressed person who isn't practicing self-care and doesn't have like a support system, they're also likely to have like more headaches, more stomach aches, maybe stress in their shoulders, be more tired and cranky, less happy and just like, you know, I'm more anxious and depressed. On the converse, if you're practicing good self-care, you're more likely to feel well-balanced, have more energy, focus, you're going to feel more satisfied and successful in all that you do, and just have a positive attitude. It also leads to better grades, in my opinion. My name is Hanson Trong and I'm currently a third year student at Northeastern University. Before that, I started off my academic journey at Highland Oaks Elementary School, um, Foothills Middle School, and in Arcadia High School where I graduated as part of the class of 2018. Hi everyone, my name is Jeffrey Lee and I am currently a freshman studying communications at USC. So I went through the Arcadia uh, school system just like all of you guys. I started at Camino, went through uh, Data Middle School and Arcadia High School. Hi everyone, my name is Peyton Graves. I went to Camino Grove for elementary school, First Avenue for middle school, and then Arcadia High. I graduated in 2017. Hi everyone, my name is Liz, and I graduated from Longley Way Elementary School in 2011, from Foothills in 2014, and from Arcadia High School in 2018. Hello everyone. I'm Tonya Licata from the FMS class of 2014 and the AHS class of 2018. And I'm Jimmy Licata from the FMS class of 2011 and the AHS class of 2015. Hi everyone, my name is Travis Chen. I'm a current senior at the University of Southern California studying international relations and global business. I'm a proud graduate of Arcadia Schools in 2017 and I graduated from Dana Middle School in 2013. Hi, my name is Danielle and I grew up in Arcadia Unified School District. I went to Highland Oaks and then Foothills and then Arcadia High. I graduated in 2008, so you do the math, I'm old. I then went on to getting my master's at Azusa Pacific University in education. Hi, it's so great to meet you. My name is Courtney Lee. Graduated in 2009. I then attended the University of Southern California, uh, the Marshall School of Business, and graduated in 2013. Hey everyone, my name is Darius. I am currently a junior at Yale, um, and before that I went to Arcata High School as class of 2018. Hey everyone, my name is Dusty Gomez. I graduated from Arcadia High in 2008. Hey everyone, my name is Taylor Lagasay. Um, Currently the co-founder and managing partner of a marketing agency called Kinship. Um, before that, my journey started in Arcadia at Hugo Reed Elementary School um, before transitioning to Foothills uh, and then going to Arcadia High where I graduated in 2012. Uh, then went on to UCLA, graduated in 2016, um, but it all started and the roots and foundation of my life were definitely set in Arcadia. Hi everyone, my name is Sarah Lee. Um, I went to Arcadia schools my whole life. I started off at Highland Oaks, went on to Foothills, and then I graduated from Arcadia High as a part of class of 2018. I'm now a junior at Stanford University. I have a coin in my hand. Now for a moment, I just want you to imagine this represents something other than a coin, like doubt or stress. So. The thing is, you can hide that coin in your hand, make it vanish like this, but it always seems to come back in the places we don't expect it to. Now, um, the, because the only true way to make it vanish is to vanquish it like this, like that. And that's also what my uh, bank account looks like after my first semester of college. I'm just kidding. But um, I think in all seriousness, I believe that mental health is just as important as physical health. I especially remember middle school being a difficult time because I was trying, I was still trying to find out 
who I am, I'm still not sure, my style, I still don't have any, interests, my hormones, and much more. So I think one of the best tips I can give you is that to take a quick break uh, when you're stressed out, when you feel like too many things are coming at you, take a quick break until you feel like you're ready to take that challenge on again, because that gives you more time to gather your thoughts and get a better plan of action. I find that when I'm stressed, it just helps if I um, communicate it with my friends and family, and just um, tell them what's going on. I find that having a group of supportive people that I can talk to about what's going on in my life really helps me get through it at the end of the day. If it's not something that comes easy in your family, maybe you seek it out in a friend's family or uh, in a therapist or a counselor. Um, mental health is a serious topic. And uh, one of the things that, um, that I do to maintain that is uh, lately I've actually committed to doing a morning routine. Um, I find that um, exercise, uh, journaling, meditation, all are very integral to uh, holding my uh, very uh, poorly adhered brain together. Um, and uh, a lot of the time I found that there was a negotiation going on in my head to do those things. Like the day would go on and I'd be like, oh, I really got to work out or I really got to meditate or I really got to journal. And I would struggle to find times during the day to do that. And I found out that when I woke up in the morning and just got it all done and, and it just became kind of robotic, um, a lot of stress was taken away because all of that energy that was spent trying to figure out how to do those things was now uh, gone. So I would highly recommend uh, finding the things that do contribute to your mental health and then building them into uh, a routine of sorts. And uh, that will greatly help you, especially uh, right now when we're all trapped inside of our houses. So now I am a fourth year at UC San Diego. I'm studying human biology and business. And I've definitely had to learn a lot about how to de-stress. So one of the first things I would recommend implementing is trying to get seven to eight hours of sleep every night. I know it is easier said than done, but trust me, it makes a world of a difference if you are well rested. So if you can, please prioritize sleeping for yourself, okay? The second thing that I use that I like to do to de-stress would be cooking or baking. I love doing it with friends and family. It's really fun. It's like a team bonding exercise and you also get to eat something really, really yummy afterwards. So I would 10 out of 10 recommend it. In 2017, um, during my college application process, I realized that mental health is so important. And during that time, I started practicing meditation. I downloaded the app, Headspace, and uh, started doing meditation and have been doing it every single day since then. So, you know, when I started doing meditation, I realized that there's so much more to just school, to just work, to just essays, and to just, you know, turning in assignments. A life is so, so important to have a mental, mentally balanced uh, lifestyle. And so um, when we do meditation, it, you really go into a zone of quiet and peace, so different than what you experience on your, in your daily lives. And so I advocate for all of you to try out meditation. And that all inspired me to start my own company, SoundMind, uh, which where we, where we are creating a mental health application exclusively for victims of depression, anxiety, and PTSD through a music therapy application. When we get stressed out, we like to put our thoughts on paper through songwriting, poetry, or even daily journaling. And we find that we're often happiest when we can help others because it gives us a sense of purpose. I just really want to say to you guys how important it is to take care of your mental and emotional health. And I know that these are parts of our well-being that we don't talk about enough. 
but truly your priority right now should to be a kid, to be happy, to be healthy. That you're giving yourself that adequate time and space that you need to pay attention to your needs, to go outside and go for a walk or hang out with friends, um, to unplug from your work. It's okay to take a step back and to breathe and to relax. So good luck everyone, I believe in you. Something that I recommend when you may be experiencing stress um, is get some exercise, get outside, take a run. But I'd say even more importantly, um, talk to friends and family members. Uh, let them in on what you're going through. Uh, you're not alone. What I'm doing now is I'm the CEO and founder of a coffee company. I make coffee creamers, all sugar-free, natural, healthy. Um, I sell directly online. And 2020 was something that threw my entire supply chain, logistics, freight postage for the biggest loop. Um, it was absolutely ridiculous. And, and everything, all those variables, to a large extent, are just not in my control. Yet I was being asked to to be in control of it. In the beginning, you know, I had to really assess the situation and this is something that I, you know, first tip for you. As all of the stress, all these voices are coming to you, people are trying to grab your attention is to tell them that you just need five minutes to take a step back and really look at things, look at things from a bird's eye point of view. Um, remove yourself from the emotion. I know it's hard, but try to do that because you'll be able to think so much clearer and all the actions and steps that you then can break down into just, all right, this decision one, this decision two, uh, versus looking at it as like, oh my God, all this stuff is going on. Cause that's the first reaction. That's the easiest reaction. The harder muscle to build and the skill to build is taking a step back, looking at it, where are all the pieces, and then just start making one decision at a time. And that's a piece of advice that my dad actually gave me back when I was in high school. Uh, I was very hard on myself. I thought that I needed to achieve and to do everything. And he said, Courtney, just stop and calm down and look at life and everything you're doing is just one decision. It's a million different small decisions. Then you won't feel so overwhelmed. Something that I recommend whenever you're stressed um, that I personally like to do is to go outside and get some fresh air. You know, that's just simply taking a break from being cooped up at home um, and doing something outside that, you know, will kind of help reset your system. Give it a shot. You, if you're able to, I highly recommend therapy. I started this year and it changed my life. And, uh, and if not, talk to a friend or a family member. I also really recommend limiting social media time. I think it's really easy to get sucked into your phone and, and it actually takes away from being present in your present moment, which is such a precious thing. As a student who tried to cram as many activities as humanely possible into my life, I have come to tell you it is not worth it. In fact, I think quality sleep should be your most important activity, all right? So take care of yourself. I currently go to UC Berkeley and over these past few years I've learned that taking care of your mental health is probably one of the most important things you could do for yourself. Personally, I found that staying active has been my favorite thing to do whenever I feel overwhelmed or stressed. I either like to go on a run or go on a workout with some friends, um, basically anything that can really help get me moving and clear my mind. The, the bottom line is that I think of the mind much like I do of the body. You have to work it out every now and then, and you have to give it attention. Otherwise, it will start to slowly erode over time. So start early, start now. Start now as middle schoolers. I urge all of you to start this journey today because it's so, so important, and it's their life is so much more, there's so much more to life than simply school or academics. And I assure you, 
as a middle schooler, I looked up to and saw high school and college students and thought that they knew exactly what they wanted to do. But I know the truth. Now, as a college student, I have absolutely no idea what I want to do in the future. But that's not exactly a bad thing. Uh, I'd like to just quote my absolutely favorite comedian, Conan O'Brien. He once said, No specific job or career goal defines me, and it should not define you. In essence, in the future, if you don't get something you wanted, don't stress over it. You are so much more than one test, one grade, or one extracurricular. Find other things you are truly passionate about and do them well. What's going on everybody? My name is DJ Johnson and I just want to take a moment to say thank you to all of the alumni for their amazing messages. And if I could just cap off what they all had to say, I want to bring this thought to you. What I'm about to say to you is either going to be a reminder or it's going to be hope. It's going to be hope for the people who say that the pandemic is the worst thing that has ever happened to them in their life. And it's going to be a reminder to those who have had some real struggles in life, some real challenges in life, right? They, they feel like the pandemic is not that challenging to the things that they've been through. Those people can remind everyone that, hey, this too shall pass. And those who feel like, hey, the pandemic is the worst, we can tell you through lived experiences that this too shall pass. And so if you're out there, you're watching this message, you're wondering if we're ever gonna get back to some sense of normalcy, I want you to understand that the sun is always shining, that there's gonna be clouds, there's gonna be storm, there's gonna be a tornado, but if you go above those clouds, if you go above those storms, you will know that the sun is always shining. If you keep that spirit and if you keep that in your mind, you too will get past any challenge, any struggle that you will ever go through in life. I'm so proud of y'all. Keep up the good work and let's finish this school year strong. What a workout. As we've learned, physical movement is one way to practice self-care. Whether that is running for exercise, playing basketball with your friends, walking around the mall, or even participating in your PE class, physical movement is a great way to lift up your mood. Now let's get our bodies moving with some Kung Fu. Greetings. Welcome to the Kung Fu segment of the wellness program. 
My name is Fenton Hayne, some of you may already know me. I'm a Kung Fu instructor here in Arcadia. And we're going to go through some uh, wellness movements and exercises to get us through. So, first off, Kung Fu, Chinese words, they do not mean martial arts or anything to that effect. Kung Fu, when translated, simply means the result of hard work. You can apply to any discipline, any art form. The more you apply yourself, the more you refine something, the better you get. Not too different from some of our seven habits, uh, sharpening the saw. So, I've been studying Kung Fu since I was a teenager, probably about the same age as you are. And it has helped improve me physically and kept me in shape but also has kept, kept me very healthy from a mental standpoint. Kung Fu requires both challenges mentally and physically. So let's begin. The first exercise I like to put us through is called a four count stretch. I'll give you a profile view. Place your hands on your hips, left foot forward, follow along. Bend your left knee and straighten your right. Notice how my weight is slightly forward. First motion is one. Bring your weight back, bending your right knee. Notice how no weight is on my left. Bend forward and stretch, bringing your chin to your knee. Bring it up. Three, four, fold. Watch again. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Notice how my body stays upright. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, and four. I'm going to switch to the other side. And again, maintain your head height while shifting your weight back, keeping your upper body upright. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, and four. Right, this is an important stance one. This is typically called the bow arrow or forward stance. And when you come back, it is called the cat stance. Right? Very important pieces in terms of training for Kung Fu. It develops your balance, strengthens your legs. All right, that's very good. That's the four count stretch. The second exercise I'd like to show you is called the horse stance. So standing upright, heels are close to each other, your hands are clenched and placed at your hips. Watch how as I open my stance, I pivot on my feet. One, two, three, four. Now my feet are parallel to each other. If I glance down, I will notice that my knees are covering my toes from sight. So my knees need to be bent properly. If I'm straight up like this and I see my toes, that is not a proper horse stance. Bring it down, and we're going to breathe deeply in through your nose, out through your mouth. Long, deep breaths in. Out. Down deep into your diaphragm, filling your lungs. Out. Expel everything. Continue to breathe. Hold your stance. Be steady. Place your hands out. Full extension, palms down. Maintain your breathing. Long, deep breaths. Controlled. Mentally focus. Go 
hold that stance. This emulates the posture of a man sitting on a horse. Therefore, it's called a horse dance. Very good. Now, take your four fingers and point them straight up, as vertical as possible. Your thumb can point straight out. Continue to breathe, continue to focus. Hold that stance. Good go through. Hard work yields good results. Now bring your hands together and down in front of your chest, pressing and continue to breathe long, deep breaths. Come on, Acadia, let's get our city dancing. All students, teachers, and administrators, let's stand up and have some fun. Funky. Funky. Everybody clap your hands. Clap, your hands. clap, 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 clap your hands. Clap, 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 clap your hands. All right, now, we're going to do the basic step. To the left. Take it back now, y'all. One hop this time. Right foot, left stump. Left foot, left stump. Cha-cha, real smooth. Turn it out. To the left. Take it back now, y'all. One hop this time. Right foot, left stump. Left foot, left stump. Cha-cha now, y'all. Now it's time to get funky. To the right now. To the left. Take it back now, y'all. One hop this time, one hop this time, right foot two stumps, left foot two stumps, slide to the left, slide to the right, crisscross, crisscross, cha-cha real smooth, let's go to work, to the left, take it back now y'all, two hops this time, two hops this time, Right foot, two stumps. Left foot, two stumps. Hands on your knees, hands on your knees. Get funky with it. Oh, yeah. Come on. Cha-cha now, y'all. Turn it out. To the left. Take it back now, y'all. Five hops this time. Right foot, left stump. Hi you guys, I hope you're enjoying yourself so far. We're so excited about what's coming up next. You're gonna need your swag bags nearby, so make sure you have them near you. In there, you're gonna find a journal. If you didn't get a chance to pick up your swag bag, no worries, you can find a copy of the journal on the website. Also on the website, you'll see a lot of other information about the people that made this possible, as well as resources and other fun things on there. Also in your bag, you're gonna have a stress ball, you're gonna have bubbles, a sticker, a bunch of other fun stuff in there. We're gonna use some of it, not all of it, but we hope that you'll join us along in all the activities that we're gonna do. The lime green bracelet really goes with um, Each Mind Matters. You can see more about that information on our website. Please check it out right there. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Enjoy, keep yourself open-minded, have fun, and know that we're all doing this together. Bye, guys. Wow, that was great. And we still have so much more in store for everyone today. Now, have you ever had a negative thought that just ruined your entire day? I know I have. Well, in our next session, we will help you develop some strategies for dealing with some of these negative feelings. I'm going to walk you guys through one of my favorite activities. It's called the bubble activity. So get your swag bags and pull out your bubbles in there. The reason why I love this so much is because when I'm teaching mindfulness for the first time, if you're new to it or learning how to just take a nice deep breath, it's a really great concrete way to learn how to breathe, right? So when we're practicing breathing, for a mindfulness purpose or a relaxing purpose or just trying to clear our minds. If we breathe like this, <sighs> that's not very calming, right? So the bubble activity, activity really helps us understand what a calm, relaxing breath is. 
So we're going to practice this together. If you guys can get your bubbles out, don't worry. No one else is watching. You're at home doing your own thing. So let's try it together. So what I want you to try is take, you're going to inhale a nice deep breath in. And as you breathe out, use your bubbles. And the goal is to try to blow as many bubbles as possible in that same exhale, right? Because again, if you're trying to blow a bubble, not very effective, right? So we want to take a nice deep breath in, try it with me, breathe in, breathe out, exhale. And try to blow as many bubbles as you can. Let's try it again. Breathe in. Breathe out. Blow those bubbles. How many can you blow? As long as you can. Okay. Now, pretty soon you're going to learn about automatic negative thoughts. And when you're doing that, I want you to think about if you're breathing in that negative energy, and then I want you to breathe it out. So let's try it. Breathe in and breathe out that negative energy. Watch, pretend that negative stuff is in the bubbles floating away, far, far away from you. Ready, breathe it in and let those negative emotions go. Those negative thoughts go. And one last time, breathe it in and breathe it out. I love that activity so much. As humans, we're breathing all the time, but whenever are we really paying attention to our breath? So this is a nice, really fun activity you can do anytime with or without your bubbles um, to just calm, have that moment to yourself. And thank you so much for participating in that. I hope you guys will try that again sometime. See you later. Hi, my name is Mrs. Grumbine. And I'm Miss Martin, and we are the counselors at First Avenue. And we're wondering, do you know that thoughts are powerful? World-renowned Dr. Daniel Amen is a psychiatrist who has said that every time you have a thought, your brain pumps out chemicals that influence the way that you feel. It happens also instantly. We average 60,000 thoughts a day. Now, those thoughts are not always conscious. A lot of times they may be subconscious thoughts, but they impact how we feel. They have an influence on our emotions. And, you know, one day Dr. Amen had a super busy day at work and he went home looking forward to this amazing dinner he had planned. And his kitchen was covered. His whole counters were covered with ants. And it was just an infestation. And he thought, oh my goodness, ants automatic negative thoughts. He'd been working with his clients that day who had had really a lot of problems from their thoughts. And he realized that ants, the negative thoughts, can make us feel bad and are damaging to our self-esteem and our mental wellness. And if you look at this brain image here, you can see some kind of negative thoughts that we, we say to ourselves without even realizing it sometimes, like, I'm so stupid, or I just feel ugly, or they're really angry at me or life is meaningless. And these are images or thoughts that can go through our brains so quickly that we don't even realize them, but it causes us to feel negative and feel bad. So what do we do about that? Well, there was this university study that showed by writing down our negative thoughts, ripping them up and throwing them away, it helped to discard those negative thoughts and give them less power. Uh, but what we're going to do is one better by using uh, Dr. Daniel Amen's three-step process to get rid of ants. We're not just going to be throwing away our negative thoughts, right? We're going to be challenging them and trying to practice uh, more positive alternatives. So how are we going to do that? Well, there's three steps. And the first step is this. What we want to do is to acknowledge our automatic negative thought that we're having at that time and write it down on a piece of paper. Our second step to this process is to identify the species of ant that we're having. So what that means is identify the type 
of automatic negative thought that we just had in our brain, right? And there's about seven of the most common types of negative thoughts that people have. Um, one of them you can see here is the always or never type thinking, and that's pretty much a black and white type thinking where this always happens to me, nothing ever goes right. So for example, why do bad things always happen to me? Or every time I try, I just fail. Um, there's no gray in there. There's no maybe or um, sometimes. It's all. It's an always or never or every time or everyone kind of thought. And this can lead us to start thinking more negatively. Yeah. So have you ever noticed how you can have maybe 10 awesome things that happen during the day and one negative thing that happens? Maybe somebody says something mean to you or a criticism human nature is such that we tend to focus on the negative. Have you ever noticed that? Um, you might even get a 99% on a test. And instead of celebrating the 99% that you got right, you focus on the 1% that you missed. Now, of course, we can learn from that. But let's look at how we can look at our positive way of looking at things. And so when we focus on the negative, we get into fortune telling like we think, oh, it's always going to be that way, right? What's fortune telling? So fortune telling is pretty much like it sounds, but the only difference is when you're seeing the future or predicting the future, you're always predicting a negative outcome rather than a positive one, which obviously is not helpful. It just um, keeps us living in fear as to what's to come, right? Um, so for example, uh, it would be, um, I'm, I don't want to try out for that sports team because I'm just not going to make it. Or I'm not going to go for ASB president because nobody's going to vote for me. Or I'm going to fail that test. And these things just put anxiety um, you know, within your body and it doesn't do anything to help you out. So um, which brings us to mind reading, which is similar. Yeah, mind reading is when you start assuming what somebody else is thinking and you're putting words in their head, so to speak. Uh, for instance, if you're walking by your friend in the hallway at school and they don't even say hi or wave to you, it's easy to start assuming that you did something wrong, they're mad at you, uh, or you know they don't like you anymore, and maybe they don't wanna be your friend, where really it might be they're having a bad day or maybe they're preoccupied with something that happened in the class right beforehand. And so it may not be that. So I think it's easy to jump to conclusions and to assume that people are thinking things that maybe they're not. And that can lead us to really feeling bad and beating ourselves up because we think we did something wrong, right? Right. And that is our next ant, which is guilt beating. And what that means is that we're basically beating ourselves up for what we should have done what we could have done or what we would have done, right? It's like coulda, woulda, shoulda. So for example, I could have done a better job or I should have called them earlier. I might've got the, you know, job that I was going for or whatever it is, right? Um, but that doesn't do anything for us. All it does is make us look at the past and not move forward and fix those issues. It just makes us feel bad about ourselves. And in that sense, we might start labeling ourselves negatively. Yeah, and so it's easy to start playing that message in our mind, like I'm so dumb, I'm so I'm such a loser, um, uh, I'll never make it, you know, I I I won't even try. Um, or sometimes we might even label other people, you know, like they're dumb, they're a loser, whatever. Uh, and we limit our possibilities when we label ourselves and when we label other people. We don't, we close down our opportunity for wonderful things that could happen if we just were more positive and looking at things more optimistically. Right. And we can, we start blaming people, huh? Right. And blaming is one of the last ants that is very common for people to do. Um, and blaming is just not taking responsibility for your own actions or your own mistakes and blaming others, just as it sounds. So for example, um, it's not my fault that I failed the test. My teacher didn't prepare me enough, or it's not my fault I'm late to school. My parent forgot to put the alarm on. Well, all that does is take the power that you have to change your life for the better and give it to somebody else, right? You're basically saying it's their fault why I'm like this. And that is one of the most dangerous things we can do because we need to stop playing the victim 
And we need to start taking control of our life and also taking control of mistakes and responsibilities that of our for our actions. So that way we can become better and happier. Um, and so those are our seven most common automatic negative, negative thoughts that lots of people have. Um, our third step in this process is questioning and talking back. So this is what we kind of call the ant eater step. And why is that? Well, ants have a natural predator, and that is an ant eater. We don't see those too much in California, but they love ants. And so we talk about the magic questions that will eat up these negative thoughts, these ants. Two magic questions. One, is it true? And is it 100% true? Is it always true? Is that always the case? Or is there any room for for gray or for possibility there. So as you're feeling these negative thoughts, ask these things of yourself. Ask uh, these questions. Is it true? Is it 100% true? So now that we have the three steps, what we want to do is look at an example and then try it ourselves, right? So um, you can see the example here. This is this person's aunt. My mom never listens to me. So they wrote that down. Now identifying what kind of ant that was. Well, they use the word never, so it's probably an always or never type of thinking. So you're gonna write that next. Then the ant eater or the questioning of that negative thought. They questioned it and apparently it wasn't true, right? Because this is why. Well, last week my mom listened to me when I needed help with my schoolwork. Maybe she's busy and we can talk later. So that is an example of how to deal with your negative thoughts and the three steps that Dr. Eamon has laid out for us. So why don't we get out our journals and turn to page four and five so we can try it together. And on page four, you'll see a list for reference of all the seven automatic negative thoughts that we just went over. And then on page five, you can see it says one, two, and three. And so what we're gonna do is do this together and for number one, we're gonna think of a negative thought that maybe we have right now or maybe we had before this or last week or one that just keeps coming up and you're constantly getting you know, that thought popping in your head. Write that down, I'll give you a few uh, seconds to do that. All right, now once you've gotten that written down, you're going to look back at that page four and try to identify which ant or automatic negative thought that that number one that you wrote down was. And this could be a combination of a couple. It can. Um, so don't be too, don't beat yourself up, um, but just try your best to pick the one you can, uh, that makes the most sense to you and write that in there. Number two. All right. Then the last thing you're going to do is question it and talk back to it. So remember those two questions that we always ask is, is this true? Is this 100% true? And write down the alternate, what, it act, what actually is the fact. All right. So this is something you can do anytime something pops in your head. And lots of times you can start seeing a pattern like, oh, you know, I'm a always or never thinker most of the time. But a lot of the times you'll get a combination of the of all seven. So just as there's a, an importance to identifying your ants and talking back to them, it's also important to have the intention of creating the positives in our life. And so we can do that with two, two exercises that we can do in the morning before you wake up uh, or before you get up, before you put your feet on the floor, you can say to yourself, today is going to be a great day because that's going to start training your subconscious to start noticing the things that are great about the day. And even start thinking about what you have to look forward to that day, because that's changing your whole focus from looking for the negatives to looking towards the positives. And you'll be surprised at the things that you'll notice if you really take time to look for them. And then as you go to sleep at night, you can reflect on the day and write down three things that you're grateful for, three things that went really well. And then you're setting yourself up even for positive dreams and positive things that'll help you even have better sleep, okay? So you're setting yourself up 
for the positive thinking and you're training and creating new habits. You're training your brain and creating new habits of positive thinking. This is something that we do our whole lives. And no matter if you're a middle schooler or uh, adult, these are, these are processes that we can do at any age and stage of our life. So try that. It's, today is going to be a great day. And what went well today? Thanks for listening. So we just learned one method of reducing our negative thoughts. And now we're going to show you another way that specifically helps reduce the physical feelings that you can have that come along with some of those negative thoughts. Ms. Alexian, can you tell us more? Yeah, so this method is tapping, which is a technique that's a blend of Chinese medicine and modern psychology. And the technique involves tapping specific points of the face and upper body that can help reduce your body's fight or flight response to stress. So for example, when your heart starts racing or when you get sweaty palms, when you focus on this negative emotion that is making you feel stressed and you are tapping at the same time, you send your body signals to relax. Now let's learn more about this tapping technique. And in this short video, I am going to introduce you to the tapping points. Just by learning these nine points, you can start your journey to relieve stress. Many of these points you may already intuitively use. A lot of times when we're feeling anxious or stressed, we go like this, or we put our hand on our chest. Now we're using these points in a very conscious manner. So the very first point that you need to learn is the side of the hand. And it doesn't matter what side of the body you tab on. This point is called the karate chop point. You got it. And tap along with me so you can get comfortable with these points. The next point is the eyebrow point. And this is where the hair begins on your eyebrow right on that bone. There you go, you got it. Now you're gonna follow that bone until you find yourself on the side of your eye. So it's not your temple, it's right on that bone. The next point is underneath the eye. So once again, you follow that bone until you find yourself right underneath the eye. And as you're tapping, you might notice that some points are more sensitive than others. The next point is underneath the, no the nose. So right between your upper lip and your nose. Then we have the under the lip point, or some people call it the chin point. And it's right underneath your lip on that crease between your chin and your lip. The next one is the collarbone point. So you can use your whole hand to tap on your chest, or you can feel that U-shaped bone, and if you go down an inch and over an inch on either side, you're gonna hit that point. Perfect. The next point is underneath the arm, and it's about a hand width from your armpit. For women, this is about where your bra strap lies. And then the last point, and yes, I know it looks silly, but a great point to hit a lot of these meridians is right on the top of the head. There you go, so those are the nine points. Now when you wanna to start to tap, the first thing to do is to notice what is really coming up. What's your most pressing issue? Are you nervous about a deadline at work? Are you anxious about a phone call or some news that you've heard? Whatever it is, get clear on what's creating the anxiety in your body. Because when we are feeling stress, we're not just experiencing stress in our head, we feel it with our whole body which is why it's so powerful to use a stress relief technique that incorporates the body. So you start by tapping on the side of the hand and you start with the setup statement. The setup statement is pretty easy and it sets you up for the process. You state your challenge and you end it with a phrase of acceptance or simply letting yourself know that you're okay. So it sounds something like this. Even though I'm really anxious about this meeting, I accept how I feel or even though I'm really stressed about this upcoming event, I accept how I feel and I give myself permission to relax. There's a lot of different ways to do the setup statement, but what's key is to let yourself know that you honor how you feel. Because too often when we're trying to move past an emotion, we're fighting against it. When we allow ourselves to accept where we are and how we feel, we open ourselves up to releasing it. Then you tap on the rest of the points by simply sharing how you feel. So you can pretend that you're calling a friend and you're just complaining, you're just telling them how you feel. This is the tape that you're probably already running in your head. 
So as a short example, going with this theme of being nervous about a meeting, it would start with tapping on the side of the hand and saying, even though I'm so nervous about this upcoming meeting, I accept how I feel and I give myself permission to relax. You would do that three times and now you tap on the rest of the points while giving a voice to how you feel. And this sends a calming signal to your brain, letting your brain know that even though you're nervous about this meeting, that you are safe, that it's safe to relax. And when you can relax, you can be more resourceful and creative and do a great job at your meeting. So then you would go to the eyebrow point and say something like this stress around this meeting. Side of the eye, I'm nervous I won't do well. Under the eye, I care so much about this meeting and it's causing me anxiety. Under the nose, the stress around this meeting. Chin, all of these expectations. Collarbone, this tension I feel in my body. Underneath the arm, all this stress around this meeting. Top of the head, all this stress around this meeting. If you're not sure what to say, like I mentioned before, you can pretend you're talking to a friend or you can just say the same thing, honoring how you feel, the stress around this meeting, the stress around this meeting. And once we bring down the intensity, we can focus on some positive phrases because when we pull out the weeds, we're able to now seed. We can actually say positive things to ourselves and we believe them. So once you feel better, and that's the key, when you feel better, you can move to something more positive. So it would sound something like this. I'm prepared, side of the eye. I'm calm and confident, under the eye. I'm ready to share my ideas, under the nose. I feel strong and confident, chin. This is my time, collarbone. I am ready for this meeting. Under the arm, I feel calm and confident. Top of the head, now is my time. So you can incorporate how you're feeling, letting go of the anxiety, and when you're able to move that, then you bring in the more positive, and then it actually feels real. So next time you tap, notice, as soon as you start feeling better, try to put in some positive statements. You'll get to the point where you can think about that meeting and your body feels relaxed. And when you feel relaxed, then it's easier to bring in more empowering thoughts. Now when you tell yourself that you can feel confident and prepared, you can believe yourself because you let go of the anxiety that was coming up with those thoughts. So that's a very, very quick introduction on where the tapping points are and how to tap. So now that we've learned the tapping points, it's important to measure our stress level before and after our tapping sessions using this scale here from zero to 10. Zero uh, meaning no stress at all, all the way up to 10 meaning unbearable stress. Let's watch Jessica use this scale as she walks us through a tapping session. Come on, let's try this together. Let's do some tapping. So everyone's in a very different situation. So I'm gonna be doing some general tapping. And what I'm gonna be focused on today is the frustration and the anxiety we may feel around being stuck at home. Suddenly our life feels completely different and we don't have the answers. We don't know when this is gonna end or how this is gonna end. And that uncertainty, if we don't take care of ourselves, can lead to a lot of anxiety. We're gonna tap on the points, giving a voice to our frustration giving a voice to this anxiety so we can calm the body. And once we're feeling calm, we can then begin to find different ways to look at things. But if I just tell you to look at the bright side and be positive and you're feeling anxious, you're gonna be like, Jess, I'm sorry, I don't believe you, it doesn't sink in. If we do some tapping first and we honor how we feel, then when we move to the positive, there is room. We gotta weed the garden before we plant the seeds. So let's just check in. <sighs> Let me know how you feel. So on a scale of zero to 10, when you think about how anxious you feel, thinking about the week ahead, what's the number from zero to 10? And if you want, you can comment or just write it down yourself. Zero to 10, how anxious do you feel? 
Great. And sometimes you might notice that you're feeling anxiety in a certain part of your body. For me, it tends to be my, my lungs. I feel like my breathing can be a bit restricted. Notice for you, is it your stomach, your chest, your shoulders, your head? If you have any tension in your body, you can also give that a number from zero to 10. And now we're gonna do some tapping. So let's start by taking a nice deep breath in. And exhale. And tapping on the side of the hand, repeat after me, either in your mind or out loud. Even though I feel really anxious about the week ahead, I honor how I feel and I give my body permission to relax. Even though life feels overwhelming and there's so much uncertainty, I accept all of these feelings and I give my body permission to relax. Even though this feels overwhelming and I hate being stuck at home. I accept all of my feelings and I relax more and more with every tap. Great, that was a setup statement. We're gonna tap on the rest of the points while we give a voice to how we feel to release the intensity with tapping. So tapping on the eyebrow point, all this anxiety, all of this stress. The news feels so overwhelming. Everything feels so uncertain. And I don't feel like I have much control. So I'm feeling all of this anxiety in my body. experiencing all of this stress. Sometimes I feel okay. And then I feel anxious again. Sometimes I feel hopeful. And other times I just feel anxious. There is room for all of these feelings. I honor how hard this has been. And even though I don't have the answers I want, even though things are uncertain, I give my body permission to relax. All right, now take a nice deep breath and we're gonna do something different here. Just put your hand over your heart. As you breathe, notice how your body is more relaxed. Notice as you breathe how you can take in more air and feeling more open, a little more relaxed. Simply ask yourself, what can I do to make this week easier? Maybe it's simply to be gentle with yourself, to be kind to yourself. Maybe you need to call someone and reach out virtually. Notice what comes to mind when you think of what you can do to bring more ease during this uncertain time. And knowing that you can allow that question to remain throughout the day and allow the answer to appear when it's ready. And when you're ready, take another nice deep breath in and open your eyes and simply check in. Check in with that intensity, that anxiety. Maybe you felt it in your body before. On a scale from zero to 10, what number is it now? Even if it just went down from a 10 to an eight or a 10 to a nine, you know that with just a few minutes of tapping, with honoring how you feel, you can calm your nervous system and you can begin to feel better. I hope that this is just the beginning for you. 
we have an incredible app called the Tapping Solution app. You can download it for free. And right now, every tapping meditation that's relevant to this time, to the coronavirus, is absolutely free. We have a tapping meditation for releasing coronavirus anxiety. We have a, a tap and breathe exercise. We have one on panic attacks, completely free. So please check out the app. It's called the Tapping Solution app. And if you like this and you feel like it can really help other people, please share it, tell your friends. We live in a time where we are so fortunate to be able to communicate in this way and to be able to support each other. Just think, everywhere around the world, people are in the same position. And there's so many people like you who are these bright lights, who are sharing this work, are sharing other work all around how to feel more at peace and confident during this time. This is what we need during times of feeling uncertain. We got to get back into our body and connect with our peace. Sending you so much love. Thank you so much for tuning in. So page six of your journal has the entire tapping sequence to help guide you the next time you want to practice. Hope you have learned enough about ants and tapping techniques so you can use them when you're feeling stressed or worried about anything.
hey there. Miss Ari here, coming to you from the beautiful Dana Middle School campus. And I'm here today to talk to you about the next session, which is, as you guessed it, all about yoga. There are many definitions of the word yoga. Probably the most widely accepted definition is that it means union. So an intersection between um, our body or the poses or the asanas that we do on our mat, as well as our mind or our focus. All of this is glued together by the breath. Did you know that by slowing down your breathing in a mindful way, that will actually slow down your heartbeat eventually, which will signal to your brain that you are safe and you are relaxed. That is our parasympathetic system at work, also known as rest and digest. There's no wonder that people actually use yoga to deal with the stress that they have in their lives. Today, you are gonna learn how to mindfully breathe, and then you're going to use that knowledge um, to apply to a couple of simple asanas at the end of the session. All of this is led by the wonderful JB, who is a fabulous yogi that works with students all over the country. I hope that you will enjoy today's session and you will learn something. Now it's time for me to practice my favorite pose, which is Shavasana or final resting pose. Namaste. Hey, 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 what's up to my earth people over there at Dana Middle, Foothills, First Ave, Rancho Learning Lab. Hopefully, this video is finding you with a smile on your face, but if not, that's legit too. And in fact, a lot of what we're going to talk about today is how you can uh, practice being with things as they are rather than going down a sort of a mental spiral. Instead, how you can sort of freeze that, look at things as they are. Uh, rather than as you want them to be or how you think they should be. My name is Jason Batung. Uh, I'm a yoga and mindfulness teacher and really excited to be talking to you today. So we're going to kick things off straight away with a pop quiz. <laughs> and you're like, what? I didn't sign up for this, but that's okay. You're going to be grading it yourself. Low pressure situation. So uh, what I want you to do is we're gonna track to see what happens like with your belly when you inhale. All right, so that's the nature of this quiz. So right now, put your hands kind of on your upper belly, right where your rib ends and your belly begins, and rest it there gently. And I want you to start to take really long, deep inhales and long, deep exhales as well. But the quiz is what happens to your belly when you inhale, okay? Typically, one of two things is gonna happen. When you inhale, your belly is either going to go sort of like uh, downward and out into your hands, or when you inhale, your belly is going to sort of like pull in uh, to your spine uh, away from your hands and almost even up as well. So those are, those are the typically the two things that are gonna happen. So what I want you to do is not worry about it. Don't think about it. Don't get all in your head. I want you just to like, whatever comes natural to you, maybe close your eyes, maybe just soften your eyelids. If you're not cool with that, you can even just sort of stare uh, at something uh, in front of you. But I want you to sort of tune in and notice what happens. So go ahead, I'm just gonna give you a moment here. Hands on the belly, deep inhales and exhales whatever that means for you, but I want you to notice what happens when you inhale. Does your belly push sort of down and out into your hands or does it pull away and up from your hands? Check it out, I'll give you a moment. All right, so if when you inhale, your belly felt like it was pulling in, kind of away from your hands and up towards your heart, you're what's called reverse breathing and uh, you're doing it wrong. <laughs> uh, 
Now it's cool. It's cool. You'd be surprised at how many people reverse breathe in this world. And that's one of the reasons that I'm here. The reason that people don't fully understand how to use their natural physiology to their own benefit is due to this really strong muscle we have that separates our chest cavity from our abdominal cavity, and it's called the diaphragm. And if you haven't trained with it at all, if you're not familiar with it, if no one's ever sat down and talked to you about this, then, you know, how are you to know? So here we are. All right, so let's get that sorted. If you do not reverse breathe, if you were, when you inhaled, your belly was going down and outward, all right, you're already one step ahead of it, but you can always start to develop that even more so, all right? And the problem with reverse breathing, okay, is that if you are lifting up, and you see this a lot, and people take a deep breath, like, that, okay, what they're doing is that they are using these essentially peripheral muscles. So muscles that aren't necessarily the main lifters when it comes to inhaling. Um, upper back, neck muscles. And if you're using those to do the heavy lifting when you inhale, you're starting to overwork them. You create tension in the neck. You create tension in the upper back. That tends to lead towards poor posture. I feel like it contributes to headaches and other sort of just feelings of being stuck. And we don't want that. No one wants that. So instead, if you start to recognize that the main worker when it comes to inhaling is this diaphragm, then you can really start to use the natural physiology of your body to your benefit. So not only will you avoid creating tension in your neck and your upper back and things, but you'll also be able to start to send messages to your body to relax. You'll send messages to your body to let go. Essentially, what you're doing is you're activating something called your parasympathetic nervous system. And that is crucial in terms of relieving stress, um, uh, getting a good night's rest, and just in general, efficiently using your body. So let's see a little bit how that works from the inside. All right, so this gives us an inner view of what's happening in the body. And you can see the bones, right? We can see the, the ribs, the individual ribs comprising the entire rib cage. We can see the spinal column, the vertebrae. But what I want you to notice is this sort of bluish dome here. This represents the diaphragm. And you can see it separates what's in the chest cavity to what's below in the abdominal cavity. And of course, these red sacs here are the lungs. So when I start the video, it's, you're going to see this, this diaphragm, this blue dome pushing downward. And this represents that kind of on an inhale, when the diaphragm pushes downward, it sort of pushes the belly down and out a little bit by displacing it. Have a look. There's the inhale, and then the exhale, it returns back. There's the inhale, and I'll pause it there. So you can see that this dome is now flattened out and pushed downward, and this is the inhale. I'm gonna unpause it, and you'll see it's gonna return back up toward the heart area, and that's the exhale. So I'll show you one more time as it moves, as the inhale expands the rib cage, pushes downward, and then exhale, it returns. So hopefully this gives you a better idea of what's happening inside of yourself as you visualize the practice when you're doing it, especially if you've been reverse breathing. A lot of times it helps to see like what you're trying to do inside of yourself to make it happen. So it's also helpful to look at the comparison between inhalation and exhalation from a still photo side by side. So here you see the blue area representing the chest cavity and there's more space, that's the inhalation. And over here you see the purple image 
where there's less space, and that's the exhale. On the inhalation, the diaphragm pushes down, the rib cage pushes out, that creates more space in the chest cavity, thereby creating a lower pressure environment. And air comes in to a low pressure environment. That's how the inhalation works. And you can make that easier the more you can expand the chest cavity. Similarly, when you exhale, the diaphragm pulls back up toward the heart, the rib cage comes in. This creates a smaller amount of space in the chest cavity and the air goes out. So essentially we're dealing with air pressure when it comes to our breath. You could think about it like an elevator. If you're in a big elevator, there's not a whole lot of pressure to get out of there. In fact, you're like, yeah, if more people can come in. Sure, sure, sure. You got plenty of space in here. However, if you're in a really small elevator, then you know, you're like, you can't wait for those doors to get open to get out of there. So small space, high pressure, big space, low pressure. The other thing that's worth mentioning is that some people will call this process belly breathing because as the diaphragm pushes down, it'll displace the abdominal organs and they'll sort of push out. So it feels like you're breathing into your belly. But technically speaking, you don't have any lungs in your abdominal cavity. You, don't have, you can't breathe into your belly. However, it's a good mental image as you practice this. So although the term belly breathing might not be 100% accurate, it still can be helpful. Now, in terms of benefits for this technique, there are many, but these are the four that I think are really, really crucial. You know, the first one is pain management, and that might sound a little extreme. And in yoga, the idea is not to get to a pain situation. So in fact, your deep conscious breathing can help you sort of navigate that and let you know that, okay, I'm getting a little bit too close to pain. I need to back off here. But there have been times in my life outside of my yoga practice, for instance, getting a root canal when the Novocaine wore off, just using my deep breathing to focus and manage that pain and get through it, uh, to a time where I got in a motorcycle crash in Thailand and I had to take a local bus to get back to my village and then get a ride to the hospital. So while I was on this you know, pickup truck with a little covering over it and the the Thai sun beating down on me midday and, you know, just this throbbing pain. I used my breath and just sat there. That was the only thing that I could do. And it was really, really helpful. Now, a little bit less on that extreme is the discomfort management. And that's where we'll more regularly be utilizing our breath in our physical yoga practice. So many of these positions that you'll be in are new or just plain difficult and your body will experience some discomfort as it stretches. This is where using your breath and focusing on that rather than a discomfort can really help you manage and be with a pose a little bit longer. So your muscles will start to open up as you can linger, as you can explore. But if the only thing your mind is thinking about is getting out of that discomfort, then you're not gonna be there for too long. it also relaxes the body. So there is a physiological effect to deep diaphragmatic breathing that stimulates what's called your parasympathetic nervous system. Not only that, but you oxygenate yourself more fully. So some of the feel good chemicals in your brain, the dopamine, the serotonin, they start to get released, which also then calms the mind. And even beyond calming the mind, in terms of physiological standpoint, I find that it helps me to direct my mind. So I remember uh, when I was younger, laying down to sleep and my mind would just start jumping on different things and I would just sort of toss and turn and uh, one thing would lead to the next. So much so that I got to a point where I was like, how am I even thinking about this? And so for fun, because I was up and my mind was active, I would retrace and try to figure out how I got there. So instead, using the sound, using the feeling, using the experience of focusing your mind on the breath can really have a calming effect and help you direct that energy. 
another metaphor that I really like deals with something a little bit more simple. In life, there's uncontrollable things. And your breath is also something that's uncontrollable, right? It, it can just happen regularly. It just happens without your control. Likewise, your breath can be controlled. We've been talking about that. And there are things in, you li in your life where you have some effect over. So I've used these sort of stylized islands just to kind of give you this sort of mental metaphor because when we are on the island of controllable things in our life, there's this sense of contentment. There's a sense, a little bit of peace, and at least there is a efficient use of your mental and physical energy. Whereas when you're on the uncontrollable island, when you're worrying about what someone thinks of you, or you're worrying about outcomes in the future that you really don't have a whole lot of control over, that place can get a little bit difficult and a place of discontentment. Now, the problem is with these two islands, when you're on one, you can't see the other. So sometimes when you're on the island of uncontrollable stuff, you think you're on a controllable island and you can't sort it out. So how I like to think about my breath is like this bridge. So because my breath is uncontrollable, it happens automatically, but it's also controllable, it's sort of this link between these two things in my life. And if I take the time to breathe deeply, it's like stepping out onto this bridge. And when I'm on the bridge, I can finally see both islands and I can realize, oh, this is the one I wanna go to. I thought I was on the controllable island, turns out I wasn't, let me head over here. So hopefully this visual is a nice metaphor of how you can start to distinguish between the things that you have some control over in your life versus the things that you really don't. All right, now that you have the background and you know how it works and you've heard some reasons why, let's actually get into it. Um, you might wanna hit pause and go get yourself like a pillow or I've got a yoga block, I don't know if you have these, uh, a blanket, all right? So my setup is gonna be a blanket I'm gonna place a block underneath my seat. Um, again, it could be a pillow or you could even fold your pillow up. And we wanna prevent our um, tailbone from tucking underneath. So once you're on your seat, whatever it is, you're gonna shift your shoulders forward and kind of wiggle and walk your tailbone out from underneath you. And then uh, bring your shoulders back on top to really create a nice, um, supported lower back, okay? So get yourself situated and let's get into it. Now, we are going to practice first some belly breathing, all right? So you're gonna put your hands onto your belly, um, just like we did with our quiz. And we are gonna actively focus on our inhales going downward and out. All right, so we're going to be using our hands to sort of give us a touchstone of focus and where we want this breath to go. All right, so sitting up nice and tall, shoulders relaxed down away from the ears, corners of the mouth slightly turn up. All right, it's not that serious. Let's enjoy it. Close your eyes, let your eyelids be soft or just stare at one thing. And I want you to really focus the inhale as long and slow as you possibly can down into your belly. Again, you should feel it push into your hands a little bit. And then as you exhale, your belly's gonna pull away from your hands. And then you might even wanna pull it slightly up towards your heart to squeeze out every last drop. Go ahead and continue on your own. You can use your nose, you can use your mouth, you can use a combination of the two. When you think your inhale's done, try to sneak in or sip in a second or two more. 
When you think your exhale's done, try to squeeze out a second or two more. Two more rounds. Fascinating on nothing except the inhalations and the exhalations. Now you can keep going as I talk, but I also want you to notice just how you feel. Like I want you to notice if there was any shift. Okay, there might not have been. We only did a couple of rounds, but this is something that you can do. I recommend maybe like five to 10 minutes. You know, pick a song or two that you really like, something on the chill side, and just focus on nothing other than the breath. And one of the other things that we're doing here is we're practicing being present. We're practicing being mindful. If we're fascinating on our breath and the process of it, we're not thinking about what we need to do later on. We're not thinking about something that happened yesterday. We're being here now. And that might sound so simple and so elementary that like you're above it. You're like, whatever, JB. But I can't tell you how important this skill is because if we don't recognize what's going on, like what's real in our life, we oftentimes get caught up in like the fantasy of what's to come or reliving that which already happened. And there's nothing wrong with like, you know, preparing for the future. There's nothing wrong with learning from the past, but it's when we start to get lost in those things, thinking that that future possibility is real. It's not. It's a possibility. This practice can help you sort that out. Now let's do one more. So instead of focusing on our belly, we're now going to focus in our ribs. Okay. So still inhaling downward, but as you can't inhale downward anymore, start to also breathe to the left and to the right to expand your rib cage. So this is the diaphragm's main helper, something called the intercostal muscles. It's the muscles of the rib cage. So you'll start your inhale, taking the diaphragm down, feeling your belly push out. Then you'll continue it with the rib cage pushing out in all directions. All right. Do your best with it. If you're not used to this before, it might be really hard. All right. And it's, you know, that's anything in life. You have to practice it to get better. Okay, so don't be frustrated with yourself if you're not quite getting it. Just come back to this and I'm sure you'll eventually start to make your way. Here we go. Hands on the sides of the body, sides of the rib cage. We don't want them down here. We want them up to actually feel those bones that, you know, that's sort of the xylophone and the skeleton cartoons. And um, go ahead and start. You don't need to wait for me. So inhaling, really trying to emphasize the rib cage pushing into the hands as you breathe in. Now, as you exhale, you can almost use your hands like you were pushing in an accordion, help squeeze out the exhale as your belly pulls in and up. Finish the exhale completely. Inhale, whenever you're ready, you don't need to wait for me. It's your experience, it's your breath, it's your practice. So keep going, fascinating on the process. And if your mind does start to wander somewhere else, you're human, it's okay. Just notice it. Once you notice that you're thinking about something else, then the opportunity is to come back to breathing into the ribs. And again, it might sound very simple, but you're slowly training your mind to notice, oh, I'm off somewhere else. I'm off in a fantasy creation. I'm off in some sort of mental construction. I might want that to happen. I might be worried about that happening, but it's not real now. Two to three more rounds of breathing. Stay with it. All 
you might even want to slowly count how long your inhale lasts, how long your exhale lasts as another sort of tool to anchor you right here, right now. And again, you can keep this going if it's feeling good, but notice how you feel. And without judgment, you're not trying to evaluate, I'm good at breathing, I'm bad at breathing, I'm good at being present, I'm bad at being present. You're just watching it. This is why I use the verb practice a lot. It's not a perfection thing. In fact, perfect does not exist. So I recommend five to 10 minutes before you go to sleep, working on what we just did. Breathing into the belly for about five minutes, breathing into the ribs for about five minutes as you slowly start to train these muscles that you maybe have never really used too much. Pick a chill song, put your phone away, put your computer away, put, turn the TV off, whatever it is, any distraction. Just like be with yourself, getting to know what's happening inside of you. All right, so I hope you felt a little bit of something happening there. Might not have been anything super profound, but it's those like early stages of like, huh, okay. I don't know about this guy, but he might be onto something. I don't know. And I'm not asking you to like, just trust me with blind faith. I want you to like put it in the laboratory of your own existence and see if it works. But I do ask that you give me an honest to goodness, genuine effort. Uh, for at least, you know, give me like seven to 10 days, you know, every night before you go to sleep, see if something doesn't start to happen. Now, in the event that you are like, I don't know, my mind's so active, I could not just focus on my diaphragm going down, my rib cage going out, I need a little bit more. Well, I got you. And that is uh, where we start to see some yoga movement come into play. I feel like this is like cross training for being able to like really just sit with something like meditation and a breath practice. So we are going to add some movement. We're going to add some sensations to our body that are going to maybe help us to sort of uh, be a little bit more fascinated and more interested and not allow that mind to drift. What you might need, something like a blanket. Okay, If you have a yoga mat, great. You don't really need it, to be honest. Um, if you're using carpet, you'll notice I took my socks off because I'm on a carpet here. So you're probably going to uh, want to do that. Uh, I just have a blanket here for a little bit of cushion for my knees because we're going to do three poses. Okay, uh, Something called cat, something called cow, something called downward facing dog. All right. Might even slip a little child's pose in there. Check it out. So um, we're going to come down on our hands and knees, <clears throat> tabletop position. All right. So first things first, let's set it up. So we want our hands right underneath our shoulders, knees right underneath our hips. So I'm not out here like this or anything like that. Nice, solid table. I want you to spread your fingers wide. And look at that. Make sure you're turning. You're not turning the, the fingers out. So this is where our, our mindfulness of our anatomy begins. We're really checking in with these like small details. All right. I have my toes tucked underneath, as you can see. You can point your toes in these first couple of poses, but eventually we're going to be tucking them underneath. So I'm just going to kind of uh, help myself make it a little bit easier. And the first pose we're going to do is called cat. And we're going to do this on an exhale. So just kind of take a look really quickly. So cat is <clears throat> when I round my back like a Halloween cat, that tailbone tucks underneath and I bring my chin into my chest. Okay, really pushing the ground away with my hands. And we do that on an exhale. The next position is called cow. All right. It's the opposite of cat. We're instead going to look up. Our tailbone is going to lift up and back. Our belly is going to drop toward the floor. This is cow pose. We do this on an inhale. All right. The third pose is downward facing dog. So from this cow position, I'm going to keep my tailbone lifting up and back as best I can. Again, my toes are tucked underneath, like I told you, a little cheat there. And then the knees come up off the ground, and we're going to try to push ourselves into like an upside down V. Now, you'll notice I've got my knees bent to help me keep my tailbone lifting toward the sky. 
if I straighten them all the way, I might feel a round in my back happen. That's no good. So you're going to bend the knees, tailbone to the sky, downward facing dog. Okay? So those are the three poses that we're going to do. Come on. It's Again, it's not a watching thing. You're not going to watch me do it. You need to do it. So come on down. Tabletop position. Hands spread. Pause for a moment here. Just gather. Whew. Nice exhale with the mouth. Go ahead, start to inhale deeply, trying to use that diaphragm and the ribcage muscles. On your next exhale, push the ground away, chin into the chest, round that back for cat pose. Finish the exhale completely. Inhale, looking up, shoulders pull away from the ears, heart drops, cow. Exhale, back to downward facing dog. Okay, now here we're going to stay for about two breaths. So if you're feeling this in your arms, if you're feeling this in the backs of your legs, I want you to experience that, watch that without judgment. And I want you to try to not focus on that, but instead go back to the focus on breathing. Now, as you finish your next inhale, drop your knees and wait for that inhale to finish. Don't just do it because I'm moving. As the exhale comes, push the ground away, come into cat pose. Inhale into cow. Exhale, push back to downward facing dog. Two breaths here. Now, if you can straighten your knees and still keep your tailbone lifted to the sky, great. No reason to praise yourself over that. It's just something you can do. Congratulations. You could start to maybe sink your heels a little bit closer to the ground. Okay, again, and it's not a destination thing. Don't feel like you have to do that. I'm just giving people who are maybe a little bit more flexible something to help give their body a little challenge so you get that feedback and start to open up. Knees come down as you finish an inhale. Exhale, cat. Inhaling, cow. Exhale, downward facing dog for two breaths. Stay with it. I'm going to come out, but I want you to stay with it and continue that simple pattern. Exhaling into cat, inhaling into cow, two breaths into downward facing dog. Maybe even close your eyes. Like really try to get lost in it. And if it's like, I kind of got this and this isn't that hard, challenge your breath then. So you can use the emphasis the slowness, the deepness of your breath is like a dial to make it a little bit harder if you want that. Okay, if you don't, then, you know, you can dial it back, maybe take it easy on the pose, or, but just find that sort of balanced place where you're, something's happening within you, but at the same time, you can handle it. And this is one of the cool things about the yoga practice. And keep going, by the way, just because I'm talking, like just kind of hear me in the distant background. I want you to keep going. And this is like one of the cool metaphors uh, about a yoga practice is that like we're intentionally doing these things that sort of challenge and almost even stress us out. And we actively practice breathing deep, sending messages to our body that, hey, everything's okay in order for you to stay calm and focused. That way, when you go out into the world and challenges and stressful situations happen to you, you've had practice on staying calm and staying focused. So instead of going into that blame game of like, oh, this is this person's fault, or like, oh, I shouldn't even be here, or excuses, instead, you just say, oh, this is happening. It's not ideal. <laughs> but I'm going to stay calm and focused because when you're calm and focused, 
you can find a couple of things. It's easier to find solutions if they exist. It's easier to find opportunities where they might show up. And you can even sometimes find gratitude for how this challenging or stressful situation is helping you to grow. So go ahead, come on down to your knees. That child's pose that I mentioned is just, you can kind of take a peek at the camera, sitting back onto the knees, let your head relax. If it hurts your knees, you can kind of come up and sort of create like a little pillow with your fists. And just relax again, and, and or relax as best you can. But again, notice how you feel. Now, if you're interested in learning more about this stuff, um, you can search my channel on YouTube. In fact, uh, lesson three speaks about this little sequence we just did in a bit more detail. Um, but there's plenty of other things that you can get into, including lectures about yoga history and yoga philosophy and practices that you can do that are a bit longer that might help you to unravel some of the tension and the effect of working on your computer all day or um, just give you a bit of a brain break and get into your body and your breath. So I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Peace. Thank you, Jason. That was wonderful. Yoga is one way to challenge our bodies and minds with intentional practice. Remember, we all need a variety of ways to help stay calm and focused. Hi, I'm Mrs. DeLong from Foothills Middle School. And I'm Mrs. Brooks from Dana Middle School and Rancho Learning Center. We all feel overwhelmed at times. And sometimes this leads us to thinking negative thoughts about ourselves. I'm not good enough. What is wrong with me? They keep looking at me. They must think I'm ugly. I'm not good at anything. What are affirmations and do they work? Affirmations are positive statements that can help you to challenge and overcome self-sabotaging and negative thoughts. Positive affirmations are very powerful because they release you from negativity, fear, worry, and anxiety. These statements are affirmative, uplifting, and often offer a concrete declaration of how we wish to view the world, ourselves, or our circumstances. When you repeat them often, you start to believe them. When we feel good about ourselves and have a positive attitude, our lives tend to run smoothly. Affirmations help us think about important areas in our lives, and they can be applied to various situations. You can use positive affirmations to accomplish anything. Here are some examples. I can handle any changes that come my way. I am a good friend. I am allowed to feel all of my feelings. My body is perfect the way it is. We all have something unique to contribute. I am open to new ideas. affirmations. First, 
pick the best time of day for you, typically at the beginning or end of your day. Second, repeat the affirmation at the same time each day. Build a habit. Next, say it with intention and belief. Once you pick your affirmation, say it out loud to yourself. There's no wrong way of saying it. Let's hear some students practice. I am worth it. I can do it. I am doing the best I can. You can also write your affirmations down and place them in different locations so you'll see them as a helpful reminder. I am smart and capable of anything I put my mind to. I embrace my flaws because I know that nobody is perfect. What matters most is how you see yourself. Positivity always wins. Always.
Did you know that gratitude makes us happier? Did you know that gratitude helps people have positive experiences connecting with you? Did you know that gratitude makes us healthier? Did you know that gratitude strengthens our positive emotions? Did you know gratitude has lasting effects on the brain? Did you know that gratitude can be a way to cope with stress? Did you know gratitude can boost your self-esteem? And did you know that gratitude increases your motivation to work? Shut up. <laughs> what? Wait, <laughs> wait. I'm always going to be so embarrassed. What makes you happy? Having fun, hanging out with friends, delicious food, making money? Well, consider this. Psychologists have scientifically proven that one of the greatest contributing factors to overall happiness in your life is how much gratitude you show. Yeah, think about that. Go ahead and marinate on it for a second. You can thank me later if you want. It'll make you feel better according to this study. You go ahead and click on it and read it if you want. Or you can keep watching because we read it and we thought it might be fun to test out for ourselves. We gathered a selection of volunteers to act as our subjects. First, we gave them a test. They didn't know what we were looking for, but it gave us a pretty good idea of their current level of happiness. We asked them to close their eyes and think of somebody who was really influential in their life, somebody who did something really amazing or important for them. We had them write down as much as they could about why this person was so important. Now, a lot of them thought at this point the experiment was over, until we really put them on the spot and tried to get them to call that person and read what they wrote about them. Thank you, Jessica. <laughs> We're gonna have to have you call your mother. So who is that right person for you? Person is my sister, Erica. We're gonna give Erica a call. <laughs> okay. Who'd you end up picking? Friend of mine, uh, Craig Ains. Her name is Dora. My college accounting instructor. Really? Mm -hmm. Is this somebody you're still in touch with today? No, I'm assuming that he's passed on. That's, that's a <laughs> shame. To the great beyond. You up for it? Um, uh, yes. What would you say if we called up Dora? Oh, well, we can try, but she lives in Britain. In Britain? Oh, no, never by heart, dude. This is awful. That's fine. I don't know my mom's number by heart. If it's true that uh, those who are going on are looking down on us, maybe he read my chicken scratch. Hey, sweetheart. Hey, how you doing? Um, yeah. You got a second? Where you at, in the hotel? I am. I'm in the hotel. Uh huh. You scared me when you asked if I had no. a second or something was wrong. No, I'm on this. I'm on like this little TV show, and they told me to talk about the person that influenced me the most. And I picked you, and then and they're making uh -huh. me call. They're making me call you. Oh, wonderful! Hi, you reached Craig. I'm not here right now. At the tone, please record your message. Oh, come on. <laughs> Hello? Hi. Hi. Erica? It's me. All right, so I got to read you this paragraph. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Go ahead, All right. sweetheart. All right, the person that influenced me the most would be my mother, Marlo Dawson. She is a single mother of two. She is a very hard worker and dedicated to her family. Hey, Craig, this is Loie. Um, this is going to be a funny little voicemail, so I hope you enjoy it. I'm so sorry for calling you at 4 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> I have to read this to you, okay? And you can't say anything or, I don't know. You can respond, but I probably will just keep going. <laughs> okay? Is everything okay? Yes, but I have to read this out loud to you. The person who has had the biggest impact on my life outside of Jesus Christ, who is responsible for my existence, was my college accounting instructor. He had a joy and enthusiasm for his job like no other teacher I have ever known. I love her to death and she keeps me going with positive talk. She is a woman that knows what she wants and won't give up until it is achieved. Oh, something. I, I, I don't know what, I'm about to cry because it's so beautiful. Mm -hmm. I, I, I have, I have to say that it's just wonderful. I first met Craig on an independent feature film set in Whitefish, Montana. I recently have been sending Craig a lot of positive thoughts as he's suffered a series of health problems. Despite his medical problems, he's continued to work and take pleasure in the small things in life, like sitting quietly with, with his wife, Janine, on the porch. Erica is my older sister and my best friend. Sometimes it even feels like we are twins. She's my number one fan and my number one supporter. 
She makes me happy because despite all my mistakes and my decisions, she still loves me no matter what. Your friendship is everything. And you are, you are one of the most important person in my life. Even when she has a kid and many children, I will love her more than her kids. Okay, maybe not. I will never forget when she flew 3,000 miles to the drop of a phone call to save me from a breakup. I'm being blessed by having a son like you. I love you. Bye. Why did you do that to me? <laughs> I don't know because they made me do it. <laughs> Thank you for picking up. Bye, sweetie. Before we let them go, we gave our subjects one more happiness test. Now we mixed up and rephrased the questions so they didn't know they were taking the same test twice. For those who took the time to actually write something down but couldn't make the phone call for whatever reason, we saw happiness increase between 2 and 4%. Good, but not exactly mind-blowing. Now for those who actually picked up the phone and personally expressed their gratitude, we saw increases between 4 and 19%. So either way, expressing your gratitude will make you a happier person. But you want to know something really interesting? The person who experienced the biggest jump in happiness was the least happy person who walked in the door. What does that mean? That means if you're having a particularly tough time, trying this out will more likely have a greater impact on you. Trust me, I'm in a lab coat. In fact, while you're at it, film it and upload it to us, and we'll do something awesome with it. I'm Julian, and this has been the Science of Happiness. Open cake, subscribe. Wow, that was an amazing video and what an impact such a small message can make. So today we're gonna take the time to put into practice what we just saw. I'm Mrs. O from Foothills Middle School. I'm Mrs. Perez from Rancho Learning Center. Hi, I'm Miss Vivian from Rancho Learning Center. And we're gonna go ahead and talk a little bit about how gratitude can become a habit in your life. So go ahead and take out your booklet from your swag bag and find this page that looks just like this on your screen. And we are gonna go ahead and put into practice and brainstorm some of the people we are grateful for in our life and why we're so grateful to that person. So let's go ahead and get started. So grab a pencil and we're gonna go ahead and take this time to picture in our mind the person that you are grateful for. So just like the video, if you want to take the time to close your eyes and imagine the face of the person you are grateful for, you can go ahead and try that. And as you're imagining who these faces are, go ahead and write down their names in the cloud. It could be a parent. It could be your neighbor. It could be a sibling or even a friend. And try to be specific and write their names down. And no one else is gonna see this booklet except you. I'm gonna give you about 20 seconds to brainstorm and jot down those names. So hopefully you had some time to write down the names of some of these special people in your life. Now let's dig a little deeper and reflect on what you are grateful for. So this is where you have to really think about why that person is so special in your life and what kind of impact have they made in your life. So if these are some examples that you see on your screen. Maybe that person is really is a really good listener and they really make you feel heard and known. Maybe that person is super encouraging and supportive no matter what you do. They're always your cheerleader. Maybe that person is somebody who 
works really hard to provide for you, or maybe somebody who just makes you feel really secure. So go ahead and take the time to think about what you are grateful for. You don't even have to be very generic. If you watch the video, they were very specific, right? Some people were very specific about certain things that made them feel grateful. And sometimes the more specific you are, that message can be more impactful. And lastly, we want to go ahead and now think about why those things have been so impactful in our lives. Why is it that when somebody listens to you, it makes you feel so good? Or if you wrote down that the person is really encouraging, why are you grateful for that? Right? So I just did a little example here, if you can see it on your screen. You want to finish the sentence, I am grateful because, maybe a good example would be, I am grateful because when my friend listened to me, it made me feel validated, right? Like you mattered, your voice mattered. Maybe you are grateful because when my sibling encouraged me, it reminded me that I could do things that are hard for me to do. Maybe you just needed that boost of encouragement and somebody came by and said the most encouraging words to you at the right time and the right moment. And that impacted you. So whatever it might be, go ahead and take the time to jot it down. And again, nobody's going to read this unless you decide to share it with them. Now, lastly, if you watch the video, the last step was to actually send out that message. And I know this can be a little uncomfortable for some people, but at the same time, challenging yourself to maybe express your gratitude is something you might want to try and experience. I know that I have taken the time to sometimes share a, just a short thank you and it really impacted some people. And not only that, it impacts me. And you could send it out by sending a text message, right? Maybe you can send, you have a social media account and you wanna send them a message or a post that makes them feel special. Or you could go old school and send them a postcard. So if you take a look at the booklet, the last page, which is the cover, is actually a postcard. So what you can do is use a pair of scissors to cut it out and write your message on the postcard and actually mail it out with a stamp. So on the left side, right over here, if you see my blue mouse pointer, that's where you wanna write down your message. And if you have their address, you wanna write their address right over here. Don't forget to put a stamp and go ahead and send it out and the recipient is going to get a special surprise in a few days, hopefully. So these are some ways that you can put into practice your expression and how grateful you are to somebody in your life. And I would love to see some of your um, actions. If you guys want to take a picture of you sending it out, you could go ahead and email it to your counselors to show them, hey, I'm doing this. And maybe they'll give you a little shout out. As you guys also saw in the video, there's so many benefits of gratitude. You just saw how people's face lit up or you heard in their voice um, how grateful they were to get that message, how it impacted them, brought joy to them, and also the person giving the message. For them, you could tell too, it's a little uncomfortable, right? You're not used to maybe expressing it that way. Um, but a huge impact it had on them. So there's so many benefits of gratitude. Um, they're definitely not all listed here, but we just wanted to give you guys some of those ideas. So gratitude releases us from our toxic, 
toxic emotions because we're just practicing, you know, what we're thankful for, who we're thankful for. And remember, it doesn't have to be always be a person. It could be an emotion. It can be you're grateful for a certain opportunity um, and anything at all, it, small or big. Think about everything in between. Um, gratitude helps even if you don't share it. So, yes, we're encouraging you to send out those lovely messages to whoever you wrote it for. But also know that just writing it down is going to help your body and mind as well. Um, the gratitude of benefits, like anything, it's going to take time. So, you know, we're talking about lasting effects and how, you know, they talked about it increases happiness and all these amazing things. Um, but just know that doing it one time is fantastic. But trying to make it a practice daily or often is really when you're going to see those long term effects, um, it, you know, the effects on the brain, how you feel. Um, so try a new habit. You know, we put some things in there, maybe using the wellness tracker. You can add that as one of your things that's in your journal as well or using some of the other tools that we put in there for you. Um, and like I just mentioned, it has lasting effects on the brain. Right. You're changing your mindset. You're learning how to be optimistic. You're learning how to, um, like that quote says right there, gratitude helps you see what is there instead of what isn't. So it really is a mind shift. And there are so many ways to practice gratitude. Um, don't think that you have to limit yourself just to what you're comfortable with or what you saw in the video. Um, in the booklet, you'll see that we also included a 31-day gratitude challenge. So it'll just give you some different ideas that you can follow every day um, that will help you practice gratitude and build that daily practice if you kind of just want to follow along with something that's easy um, and there for you. You can also use your journal to journal daily. If you don't want to follow the gratitude challenge, it can just be something that you want to draw out, doodle, just take notes, put some stickers in it, whatever you're comfortable with that kind of demonstrates what you're thankful for every day. Um, there are also a couple of other ideas that we've included in the booklet, including gratitude A through Z, which is just picking a letter from the alphabet and aligning something that you're thankful with to that letter. You can also create a gratitude jar that maybe you keep by your bedside or maybe the whole family uses. You can write something that you're thankful for, put it in the jar, and maybe you and your family will share with each other once a week or once a month what you guys are thankful with, um, thankful for. Um, another thing, if you're comfortable or more comfortable doing, is that there are a bunch of gratitude apps that you can download on your phone. They're free, super simple, and easy to use. So here is just an example of one of those gratitude apps that you can download. Um, it will guide you through your practice um, you can create notifications, so like just reminders of when you want to do this, maybe in the morning, maybe before you sleep at night. And it can also be helpful in giving you prompts of, for example, what made today a good day. And it'll give you the space to kind of jot it down um, and keep that as a reminder on your phone. We've been talking a lot about how you can express your gratitude, but we really wanted you all to know from the bottom of our hearts how grateful we are for you. So please enjoy this video. Hey guys, I really miss you and I cannot wait to see you again in person. I just wanted to say that you're all doing a wonderful job and I really appreciate all the perseverance and hard work that you've shown. Hello students, just got some simple words for you. Stay motivated and you will overcome the challenges. Hi, I just want to say thank you to all my students. Teaching you is the highlight of my day and you are my inspiration. I am so grateful that I have all of my students in my life during this very, very difficult time. Hello, Arcadia Unified Middle School students. This is Mrs. Zyma from First Avenue. And I just wanna tell you that we're proud of you. Keep up the good work. We know it's not easy. And we're all in this together. 
Hi Arcadia Middle Schools, to the precious Dana Mariners who know me, I just want to let you know um, how much I appreciate each and every single one of you. You matter so much to me. You fill my heart every single day with gratitude. Thank you for keeping me smiling, for inspiring me with your endless creativity, and most of all, for always being yourself. It always keeps me going. Saranghe. Hi students, it's Miss Friedland from Dana. I wanna share a postcard of Bob Ross, the painter. Anything that you try and you don't succeed, learn from it, it's not a failure. I am so impressed with uh, how hard everyone is working during online school. I know the situation is not ideal, but there's so much try and so much effort and so much joy that I experience every day with you. Thank you for that. Hello, Arcadia Unified School District students. This is Mrs. Nelson here from Dana Middle School. And I just wanted to share with each and every single one of you, you are all amazing, you're strong, you're talented, you're beautiful, and you're not alone. Have a great day, have a great year, and good luck to all of you. Bye-bye. Hey all, Mr. Chen here. And this is a quick shout out to my sixth, seventh, and eighth grade students. I know at times virtual learning has been maybe challenging or even frustrating. But no matter what challenges have come, you have always succeeded over and over again. You have proven to be remarkably intelligent, creative, responsible, caring, mature, and most importantly, to be kind individuals. And for that, we just want to say thank you, we love you, and we miss you, and we can't wait to see you back in the classroom. This is Ms. Salazar from Foothills. I just want to say in this crazy time that none of us have ever experienced before, I'm just so grateful for you. I'm so proud of you for just showing up every day and trying your best. I can't imagine what it's like to be in your shoes, but I'm trying my best to be there for all of you as much as possible, as I'm sure all your teachers are. And I'm so proud of you for being so resilient. Hi everybody, I just want to say how proud I am of all of you for facing the challenge of distance learning head on. I know it hasn't been easy, but you have all demonstrated such a great effort through it all. Keep up the great work and I can't wait until we can all be together in the classroom again. Miss you all. Hi, I am the school nurse at Dana Middle School. My name is Tamara Goad and I just want to let you know that you are not alone, that we are all in this together. So hang in there and I hope to see you at school really, really soon. I can't wait to give you an elbow and say hey. So hang in there. Hello everyone, this is Mr. Ulloa from Foothills Middle School. I'm here to share one fact about all of our students, and that is fact. You're awesome. Hi middle schoolers, Mrs. Reese here from First Avenue, and I just want to take some time to send you some love and hugs and to let you know that we're so proud of you. You are beautiful, you are smart, you are loved, but best of all, you have the ability to make a difference in this world. So keep being you. Namaste, kind and gentle students. Remember, academics is important, but your mental wellness and well-being are even more important. So stay well, my friends. We hope you are all having a wonderful time with family and friends. Stay healthy and well. We miss you. Hey, students. You are more brave than you believe. You are more strong than you seem. You are more smart than you think. You are more loved than you know. Keep working hard, middle schoolers. Hi, guys. It's Miss Wong. Um, to all of my students who I had the pleasure of teaching this first semester, um, thank you so, so much for being such an amazing group of students. Um, I love you all so much. You bring such a smile to my face. Um, the fact that we can connect even through distance learning and um, that you are working so hard in these circumstances. Thank you for persevering and having integrity and being so respectful. Hi 
everybody. I'm Mr. Sierra from Dana Middle School, and I'm bringing three words to you guys today, which is read, write, and create. The biggest one here for me to you is be creative. Uh, you'll be amazed at how much your creative spark can change the world. Uh, and that's because it's special and unique to only you. So please take time to be creative today and uh, express yourselves. Winners are not people who never fail, but people who never quit. Hi, Arcadia students. Good words are worth much and cost little and you show that every day. I'm so very proud to work with you. Greetings, middle school students. I'm Mrs. McQuaid. I'm the principal at Rancho Learning Center. I wanna remind you how important it is to take the very best care of your mental well-being. Improving your mental wellness is probably the most important thing you can do for yourself today and for your future. Participating in activities like mindfulness, breathing exercises, even a daily walk can all help to improve your day and your overall mental wellness. Give it a try. Your wellness matters. Hi, this is Mr. DeGrazia from First Avenue. I wanted to thank all the students for staying positive and working hard to get through this time and make sure that you stay connected, keep talking to your friends and family, FaceTime, give them a call and stay positive. We're all gonna get through this and uh, take care of yourselves. Hello, Arcadia Middle School students. I'm Dr. Acker, the principal at Foothills and the dad of a Dana student. At a time when a lot of things have changed and some things feel like they are out of our control, I want to remind you that you can do positive things like mindfulness activities, breathing exercises, cuddling with a favorite pet, or spending time outdoors to improve the way you feel. So like Theodore Roosevelt said, do what you can with what you have where you are. Take good care of yourself, take good care of one another, and know that if you need help, we are here for you. Hi, Arcadian Middle Schoolers. I am Ms. Nelson. I teach at First Avenue Middle School, and I am just here to remind you that your teachers miss you. We're here alone at school. We can't wait to get you back. And this is just a reminder that this is just a stage. This will be over soon, and when it is, we'll come back together better and stronger than ever. Take care, and we'll see you soon. Hi guys, it's Mrs. Forbes, and I'm so grateful that I get to see you guys at least through Zoom every single day. I'm thankful for your comments in the chat. I'm thankful when you ask questions, and I'm also thankful that you helped me figure out how to play Among Us. I'm also thankful for your book recommendations and just all the little things that you get to tell us about your life. Can't wait to see you soon, bye. Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Issa, and I'm excited to give you my message. Uh, I want you to know that in this whole world, there's only one of you. You are unique and you are beautiful inside and out. Please don't ever forget that. If you ever feel you don't have cheerleaders, remember, we are your cheerleaders, okay? And I want you to know that you are loved by all of us. Hi guys, it's Mr. Young. I wanted to take a moment to thank all you students for really buckling down and, and doing your best to attend class each day uh, during these challenging times. Um, you know, I think hope is on the way. Uh, hopefully we'll see you guys soon. Take care. Hey everyone, I just wanted to say thank you so much for being you. I've really enjoyed uh, spending my days with you this semester and I'm so proud of you and everything you've accomplished. So you too should be very proud of yourselves. This is a crazy time we're living in and, and you're doing great. I cannot wait for the day we can all be back together again. Bye. I know it probably sounds really silly and really corny, but you know what I'm thankful for? I'm thankful for your smiles. We are all dealing with isolation during these very difficult times. And I think just the simple act of smiling to somebody, I know it makes my day. So I hope if I smile at you, you feel good. I know when you smile at me, I feel good. So let's just keep smiling because we're going to get through this. Hey guys, Mr. Gould here. Hey, I just want to say thank you for those of you that show up every day and have your cameras on and are you know energetic and ready to learn. and. You know, just hang in there. We'll get through this together. It's going to take some time, but we'll get through it. 
Hey, middle schoolers. Uh, this is Mr. Mora, your friendly neighborhood science teacher. And I just want to tell you that I am grateful for you, for the uh, perseverance that you are showing, for the uh, abilities that you're displaying day in and day out. Uh, what we are doing right now is not easy and you are all doing it with grace. And I'm just so happy that I get to spend my days with you guys. Hi guys, it's Miss Siler from Dana. Um, I just wanted to tell you how impressed I've been with how hard you've been working, how resilient you've been, what a great attitude you've had this year. Um, and just remind you that this too shall pass. And when you get through this, I know it's been hard, but you're gonna come out on the other side even stronger and more able to tackle everything that life throws your way. So keep up the great work, guys. You're doing great. students, this is Mrs. Hoffman from Dana Middle School. I just wanted to say I'm so proud of you. I am here for you. I miss you. I can't wait to see you and say woohoo. <laughs> Hi everyone, I hope this finds you well. I just wanted to say um, I miss you. I uh, wish we could be together in person and we will very soon. But I uh, want to say thank you for your hard work. Um, encourage you to ask questions and um, turn your cameras on and uh, talk to your teachers and we uh, we really do miss you and we look forward to seeing you um, as soon as possible. So hang in there and thanks for all that you're doing. Hello everybody, I just want to take this opportunity to do a shout out for all of my students. Thank you so much for turning on cameras, interact with me even on the days that you don't feel like going to school. During this kind of difficult time, I know all of you guys feel so isolated at home, but because of you, I don't feel that much of a loan what I was teaching. So thank you so much. Hello, AUSD middle school students, especially the manners of Dana. This is Mrs. Smith. You know, every snowflake is different, yet all of them are beautiful. And this year has definitely been different, but please take the moment to find the beauty in each day. Stay strong, stay resilient. Remember, we are all in this together. We all miss you and hopefully we'll all be together again soon. Hi, sixth graders. I am so thankful for each and every one of you. Thank you for always coming to class with a smile on your face and greeting me with a cheerful hello. Um, I know we spent a generous amount of class time uh, talking about food, but we always, always, always get our work done. Uh, great job with um, all that you've accomplished this school year. Keep up the great work. And I hope someday in the near future or far future, we get to meet in person. Until then, bye-bye. Hello, students from Foothills First Avenue and my beloved Dana. This is Mr. Dima. I just want to tell you guys that no matter what, as a teacher, I am here for you. I do this for you. I am thankful for you. You guys literally give purpose to my career and I'm happy to be there for you at all times. So just know that I'm grateful and I want to just say, how you doing? Thank you so much, Foothill students. You do so much coming to class all the time. You're dealing with, with all these tech issues that we have. And I really appreciate everything you're doing to try to make this a meaningful school year. It really is a crazy time. Um, we're asking so much of you and you really are amazing and doing a wonderful job with everything. So thank you so much and really great job. Hi, I'm Mrs. Van Osdahl, and I teach at Rancho Lab School. And as you can see, a lot of magic happens in this room, if you want to call it that. Um, the magical ones here are you guys. I'm so impressed with everything that you're able to do. You all deserve a gold star. So here, let me get that for you. I'll put that right there on your forehead. You guys are awesome. Thank you for attending our Alive and Aware Wellness Discovery Summit. You made it. You just made history. This was the very first wellness day in the history of Arcadia Unified School District. We are deeply grateful to be working with some of the best students ever. You and your well-being matters to us. 
Your journey does not stop here. Your wellness journey starts now and we help you use the tools that have been shared today. Be kind to yourself and be kind to others. Remember that we are all in this together and we are here for you. We care about you. We miss you, but we will see you soon. Schools closed, hearts open. Clap your hands. Clap, 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 clap your hands. Clap, 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 clap your hands. All right, now, we're going to do the basic step. To the left. Take it back now, y'all. One hop this time. Right foot, left stump. Left foot, left stump. Cha-cha, real smooth. Turn it out. To the left. Take it back now, y'all. One hop this time. Right foot, let's stomp. Left foot, let's stomp. Cha cha now, y'all. Now it's time to get funky. To the right now. To the left. Take it back now, y'all. One hop this time. One hop this time. Right foot, two stumps. Left foot, two stumps. Slide to the left. Slide to the right. Crisscross. Crisscross, cha cha, real smooth. Let's go to work. To the left, take it back now, y'all. Two hops this time, two hops this time. Right foot, two stumps. Left foot, two stumps. Hands on your knees, hands on your knees. Get funky with it. Oh, yeah. Come on. Cha cha now, y'all. Turn it out. To the left. Take it back now, y'all. Five hops this time. Right foot, left stump. 